dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today on this day that our nation celebrates President's Day, we pray also in this Mass a recommendation from the diocesan ordo, a Mass of thanksgiving for the gift of life. And it's fitting that we pray this on President's Day because the President has such an opportunity to uphold the dignity, the value, and the legal protection of human life. And so we pray in a particular way for our current president. Uh, He's shown signs of goodwill and intent to do what he can to correct the evil legislation we have in this country that permits the killing of innocent human beings before birth, now even after birth it seems, and certainly uh, it won't be long before the weak, the sick, the defective will also be legally killed unless we change our hearts. And it's a change of heart, or the lack of that, that we hear of today in the reading from the book of Genesis and the account of the first murder of a human being by another. When Cain killed his brother Abel, out of the hardness of his heart, over envy because Abel offered to the Lord a gift that was more pleasing to the Lord than Cain's. And he was envious and resentful of this. The speculation as to why God may have preferred Abel's gift, the logical thing seems to be that Abel specifies gave out of the best of the firstlings of his flock. Abel was a tender of sheep, a shepherd, and Cain was a tiller of the soil. It's not that God preferred a lamb to a gift of wheat. It's that Abel offered the best of what he had, and it seems that Cain just gave something, a token, not a real generous sacrifice. In any case, The Lord did give him an opportunity to reform, to repent, to be humble and see that he could, in fact, uh, recover his lost honor. He was crestfallen is what it tells us. So his pride was hurt. His younger brother outshowed him. That's the way he looked at it. But the Lord gave him an opportunity. He says, why are you so resentful and crestfallen? If you do well, you can uphold your head. But if not, sin is a demon lurking at the door. His urge is toward you, yet you can be his master. These words seem to have fallen on deaf ears. That is, they didn't enter into Cain's heart and change it. Because the next line we read, Cain said to his brother Abel, let us go out into the field. When they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. So Cain rejects the overtures of the Lord, the encouragement that he's offered, the hope that he can change and instead is focused on himself, and he does this evil deed. And he loses just about everything but his own life. He, we were told in the beginning, is a tiller of the soil. Now, he not only uh, has killed his brother, lost his brother, through his envy, through his rage. Uh, he loses the land, too. He's, his land 
will produce nothing, the Lord tells him, because of the blood that he has shed on it. And he is consigned then to a life of wandering. He will belong to no land. He will be a wanderer. And there's a certain irony in the way this plays out because it, it sounds, it reminds me of the parable of the, the sower. Sometimes it's also referred to as the parable of the soils. Cain, who is a tiller of the soil, is himself the exempl exemplification of the bad soil that our Lord talks about. Some seed fell on the packed earth of the path. Birds came along and ate it. And the Lord explains that the birds represent Satan, who takes the word away before it can bear fruit. And this seems to be the case with Cain. Even though the Lord speaks to him, uh, his, his, heart is heart, his heart is hard, and this demon that's at the door that the Lord warns him about comes and takes away that uh, word of hope, and Cain acts on his evil inclinations. And so here, from the very beginning, we have a picture, a spiritual illustration of the culture of death, which we are praying today in this Mass for change. We're giving thanks for the gift of life. But we see that the, the culture of death was around even at the very beginning, that unwillingness to repent and the what, what preceded it was a lack of generosity on Cain's part. He, he was more concerned about his own things, his own comfort. He withheld instead of being generous to the Lord and recognizing that uh, everything he had came from the Lord. Abel realized this and gave back. Cain did only a token gesture. And so a small offense these small offenses in our spiritual life would be uh, the venial sins that we give into instead of having the generosity to say no even to those minor offenses. Why? Because we want to love the Lord with all our heart and all our strength and all our mind and all our soul and being. Instead of that, we want to hold back for ourselves, even though our desires are not conformed to his will, and the little offenses become bigger offenses unless we repent. And so let us take the example of Cain to heart and realize that that evil, sadly, is in each of us in latent form. Due to original sin, we are all inclined to selfishness. And if we give in to selfishness in little ways without repenting, eventually we too can end up like Cain, liars and murderers. Because we'll be under the influence of this demon that the Lord warns about. Christ came to save us from that sad and deplorable fate. And he offered us, he offered the sacrifice he was the lamb that offered himself for our sake, and he gave us the church and the sacraments, and especially in this regard, confession, so that when we do offend God and when we, are, we fail to be generous, we can repent, and we must, to avoid continuing this culture of death that is now present on a grand scale and upheld by the powers that run the world. And the Lord, too, gives us our food, the sacrifice of the Mass that gives us the bread of life. Let us, brothers and sisters, avail ourselves of this bread of life, and when we sin, let us avail ourselves of God's mercy through the sacrament of confession and do our part generously to spread the kingdom this way in our own hearts first, let it be established and 
And then let us intercede for our brothers and sisters and uh, our leaders that we might have a culture of life. Praise be Jesus and Mary.